Welcome to Church Online with the Stewart Church of Christ. I'm so excited that we have another opportunity to worship together, although distant. This here will replace the Sunday evening lesson. We'll have songs and prayers, an opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, and of course, a message from God's Word. I'm very excited to be here with you today, even though I am in my office and you are hopefully in your home staying safe. I'm excited to praise God, so let's get started. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Sweetly I'm trusting my Redeemer as I go singing on my way. So happy am yes, I. Yes, so happy now. Yes, happy am Very I. Very happy now. Ever I know that He is with me, keeping my soul, soul from day to day. So happy am happy I. Happy now am I. Yes, happy am I. Yes, happy am I. Happy am I with my Redeemer, singing along the homeward way, way and telling the lost telling of His all great the love. lost of His great mercy. Happy am I to I'm always with happy, me, keeping me spotless yes, day by day. I'm happy along yes, the I'm way happy to you along the way, along the journey. Sweetly I sing along the journey, helping the lost to know His love. So happy am yes, I. Yes, so happy now. Yes, happy am I. Very happy now. Hoping to meet Him in the morning, in that sweet happy, happy home above. So happy am happy I. Happy now am I. Yes, happy am I. Yes, happy am I. Happy am I with my Redeemer, singing along the homeward way, and telling the lost telling of His all great the love. lost of His great mercy. Happy am I to I'm always have me, keeping me spotless yes, day by day. I'm happy along yes, the I'm way happy to along the way, along the journey. Looking for Him most any moment, ready when Jesus shall appear. So happy am yes, I. Yes, so happy now. Yes, happy am Very I. Very happy now. Keeping my lamp all trimmed and burning. Feeling is coming, coming now is near. So happy am I. Happy now am I. Yes, happy am I. Yes, happy am I. 
Happy am I with my Redeemer, singing along the homeward way, way and telling the lost telling of His all great the love. lost of His great mercy. Happy am I to I'm always him, happy, keeping me spotless yes, day by day. I'm happy along yes, the I'm way, happy to along the along the way, along the journey. Will you pray with me? A great and awesome God in heaven, we come before you to thank you for a, another opportunity we've had to dive into your word and to sing praises to you and worship you together, Father. We thank you for this technology that we have today that even though we're supposed to be separate, we can still be together and we can still interact with each other, Father. Father, there are many on our prayer list that we ask uh, for healing from you, Father, uh, for guidance and for strength. Father, there are some who have lost loved ones and we ask that you comfort them as only you can. Uh, especially now that we're separate and we can't always rely on physical comfort from each other. Uh, we ask for an extra blessing from you on them, Father. <clears throat> Father, those who are under financial stress, Father, we ask that you bless them. Uh, you reassure them that you are in control and that no matter what happens, uh, you will take care of them, Father. <clears throat> and Father, we ask that you continue to forgive us uh, every day as we know we need it every single day and that you will always be with us and you'll always keep us safe and uh, we know that at the end father we will get to be with you in heaven uh, and by that is by far the best blessing you can give us we thank you for everything in your son's name we pray amen bless the lord O oh my soul O oh my soul Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great. And your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. To bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near. And my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. I'll 
worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. desire and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship you. You're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. Eighty-seven percent of Americans owned running shoes but do not run. Likewise, 88% of Americans own Bibles, but the majority of them have never read it. And that's kind of what I want to focus on today is this idea that there's a connection between how we exercise here in the physical world and how we exercise in the spiritual world. For those of you who know me, I go into spurts of being enthusiastic about exercise. And by exercise, I mean the stair stepper at the Planet Fitness. Currently, I am not in that spurt, as many of you know. And for a lot of people, their spiritual exercise comes in spurts and then fades away to almost nothing. So this morning, I want to look at a few examples of ways we can be spiritually exercising. The first one is simple. It's reading the word of God. This is the means by which we grow spiritually. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If we want to grow, we need this spiritual milk. We need God's word. We read similar things in the Psalms. In Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 through 10, it says, the law, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, they than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. If we want to grow, we have to seek something more valuable than physical exercise. Seek something more valuable than earthly possession. Seek something more valuable than gold. We should be seeking the word of God. It was by the word of God that Jesus resisted temptation. We read about this in Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, he answered and said, 
It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He quotes the Bible again in verse 7, and in verse 10, he quotes the Old Testament for a third time. It is by the Bible in which we, too, resist temptation. It is by God's word in our hearts that we can resist sin. In Psalm 119, verse 11, it says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. The word of God is therefore foundational to our spiritual exercise. If we want to be spiritually fit, if we want to pursue spiritual fitness, then we must train. We must train in God's word. I'm sure a lot of you have seen those CrossFit people out and about on the side of the road. They're pushing dumpsters and rolling large tires and doing things that look like manual labor more than they do exercise, but they're doing it in order to train. And their devotion to training is much higher than mine. Their devotion to physical fitness is much more intense than I could ever imagine myself getting to. But what if our desire to grow in God's word, if our desire for spiritual fitness mimicked those people we see rolling tires up and down the side of US-1? We're to develop this habit of reading the word daily if we want to make it any sort of thing. The same is true with exercise. If you want to make something a habit, you have to do it over and over and over again until it comes a second nature. If you want to develop a habit, you have to start slow. You have to work towards larger goals. Yes, a great goal would be to read the Bible in however many days or months or a year. But you're not going to go from not reading the Bible rarely ever to reading it every single day. You have to start slow. We have to work towards progress, one step after another. And we have to meditate on what we read. This is something that I think a lot of us forget. We get so caught up in, I'm going to read the Bible in a year or in six months, or I'm going to read the New Testament, or I'm going to read the Old Testament, or I'm going to read this or that. We forget that we're supposed to actually understand what we read and not only understand it, but apply it to our lives. And that's a skill just as much as weightlifting is a skill. It's something that takes time and effort, something you have to work towards. So if we want to become spiritually fit, the first step is to desire, to pursue, to develop ourselves in this spiritual milk, the word of God. The second step that I'd suggest is the spending time in prayer, for there is power in prayer, and we know there is power in prayer, but again, I think it's one of those things that we know but don't think about often. In Acts chapter 8, verse 22, it says, Repent therefore of your wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of your heart may be forgiven you. Prayer is where we find forgiveness. Prayer is also where we find peace. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Prayer is also where we find our strength. It's where we find opportunity. It's where we find boldness. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, it says, And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Prayer is also where we find wisdom. Now I'm sure all of us can pray, God, please give me wisdom. And we can hope that one day we'll wake up much wiser. But unfortunately, that's not how prayer, praying for wisdom works. When we pray for wisdom, God gives us opportunities for us to learn wisdom from. And so often we want wisdom, but we don't want to have to go through the process of learning it. So often the process of learning or gaining wisdom comes from struggle. It comes from hard times. And yes, that is an answer to prayers, but it's an answer sometimes we don't want. Prayers where we can find spiritual healing. Prayer is the foundation to spiritual fitness. Prayer is what we need dearly. As we read God's word, we should pray for wisdom. We should pray that God helps us apply it to our lives. We should pray daily for forgiveness and strength and opportunity for boldness, for all these characteristics that we know we need, but we're not quite there yet. 
We should pray for peace and healing and tranquility. We should pray earnestly, fervently in prayer and with thanksgiving. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Consistent, fervent prayer strengthens our relationship with God. The third form of spiritual exercise that I'd like to bring up is this idea of singing praises. So often we sing to God in worship. We sing to God in worship in a church building or maybe even in our own homes, but we do it almost out of habit. And yes, habit forming is a great step to getting something to become natural, to make it come as a second nature. But if you sing only out of habit, you're missing the purpose of singing. The purpose of singing is to praise God. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening. It's a type of spiritual sacrifice that we offer to God. We are sacrificing our time, our effort that we could be devoting to something else to praise God. It's a way to be filled, to feel God. Now, I know. Now we talk about worship isn't for us. And I understand that worship isn't for us. But if you go throughout a whole worship service, or if you're singing praises to God, and you don't feel anything, I have high doubts that you're actually worshiping. And I know that's harsh. I know that's rude. But I'm telling you, I've been there too. I'm there fairly often. That so often I'll be singing out of habit, instead out of praise, instead of out of awe. Our singing of praise is a way to respond to God's goodness. In James chapter 5, verse 13, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone among you cheerful? Let him sing. Singing praises is foundational to our spiritual well-being. And it's an important and extremely important part of our spiritual fitness. We ought to be making praising God a part of our daily devotion. And I know that sounds hard. Where am I going to find the time? Where am I going to find the effort? Who am I going to sing with? Am I going to be doing this by myself in the corner of the closet? Well, maybe you are. But it's something that God deserves. And it's something that not only is for God, but we benefit from as well. Maybe we could sing while we drive, while we work either quietly or aloud, but we're told to make melody in our heart. We're told to sing with grace in our heart. And that's what we ought to do. Singing enriches our souls and it fortifies our relationship with God. And those are things that we want. Those are things we should desire. And those are things that are key to spiritual fitness. The fourth way of spiritually exercising that I wanna bring up is this fellowship with one another. Fellowship was extremely important in the first church, and it continues to be extremely important in the 21st century. Fellowship then was a way to find a home to stay in. Fellowship then was allowing somebody into your home, not only for worship, but for meals. Fellowship now should be something similar. The church is a body of Christ. And the only way that the body can get anything done is if each part does its share. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16 say, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for all. If we want to grow, if we want the body to grow, we have to work with one another. We must fellowship with one another. Our assembly is designed to stir one another to love and good works. Hebrews chapter 24, or Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much for the, so much the more as you see, the day approaching. I've seen Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25 taken out of context and applied to so many different things. And out of all those things I've seen it apply to, very rarely 
do I see it applied to stirring one another up in love and good works, despite that being exactly what the verse says. Our fellowship is a source of comfort. It's a source of edification. It's a way to become closer to one another. Frequent fellowship is crucial to remaining faithful and steadfast. Again, assembly should become a habit. We should take advantage of this opportunity we have at any chance we get because we know we are blessed. We say we're blessed. So often we'll hear out in the Sunday morning assembly, somebody praying and thanking God for the freedom to assemble. And yet so often we act like it might become a chore. We should be taking advantage of every assembly offered. We shouldn't be going just one time a month one time a year on holidays or when I feel like, or when it's convenient for me or when my children don't have sports practice or whatever it may be, we should be hoping and excited to be there every single time the door is open. We should be looking for ways to study the Bible with one another, whether that's by phone, whether that's by email chains, whether that's by Zoom classes, we should be looking ways to fellowship and learn God's word with one another at every single chance we get. Fellowship with Christians strengthens one's faith in God and in Christ. And spiritual strength is our aim, or at least it should be. Now, the fifth form of spiritual exercise that I want to look at is this idea of good works. Now, I understand we are not saved by works alone. We read that in Ephesians chapter 2. We read that in Titus chapter 3. But we are created in Christ to do good works, to glorify God, again, you read that in Ephesians chapter 2, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Or Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. You should do good works for multiple reasons, but the two we read about here is, one, it's why we are created in Christ. We are made new in Christ. We are raised in his resurrection, buried in his death for this purpose. And by this purpose, others can come to know God by the works that we do. We are to be fruitful in every good work that we participate in, Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. And we're not to grow weary in doing good. And I know that one might be harder to assess on yourself. I know this year, especially in the year past, 2020 and 2021, starting to feel like four-letter words at this point, but it's easy to grow weary right now in doing just about anything, but we're not to grow weary in doing good. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Good works are essential if we are going to reap spiritual benefits. We should be sharing the gospel with those who don't know it or those who do. We all need a reminder. We should be ministering to our brothers and sisters in Christ and to those who are not. We should be ministering to them both physically and spiritually. We should be using our resources, our time, our money, our talents to help the poor, the sick, the widows. Each day we should try to do something that blesses another person. Good works done often build spiritual endurance. And endurance is the key to any fitness routine. The goal when exercising, when lifting weights, when running, when doing the stair stepper, stair stepper at the Planet Fitness that is now sitting next to the Rancho Chico. It's a dangerous game, I know. But the goal of all of those things is to build endurance. The goal of reading the word of God, spending time in prayer, singing praises, fellowshipping, and doing good works. We need to build endurance in those things so that we can do them often, so that we can do them with a cheerful heart, so that we can do them to glorify God, and so that we can grow in them, so that we can grow closer to God through our physical exercise. Exercise, I know, at this point in the year, we just had New Year's just about a little over a month ago at this point. I think a lot of us are already over-exercised if we even made 
those silly New Year's resolutions this year. But exercising our brains, our hearts, and our souls for the glory of God is something worth working towards. Exercising yourself toward godliness for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that is now and that which is to come. First Timothy chapter four, verse seven through eight. Yes, physical exercise is great. Physical exercise does have benefit, but spiritual exercise has a promise of life now and to come after. Spiritual exercise can give you life now, it can give people around you life now, but it also can give you and the people around you a life to come. And that's the true goal. I hope you enjoyed this lesson this evening. I hope you found some benefit for it. I hope this call to action to actually begin your spiritual exercise routine will do something for you. I know personally, I am going to map out an exercise checklist that I'm going to participate in the next couple of weeks. And you can hold me accountable to if you want to. And I'm going to map it out just like I would as if I was training at a gym, but it's going to be training for the, training through the word of God. I'm going to do reps and sets. I'm going to time it. I'm going to go the whole nine yards. And hopefully by the end of it, I grow. If you want to do the same, I encourage you to join along with me. But of course, these things are good for the Christian to grow in. But if you're not yet there, if you've not yet sacrificed your life to Christ, if you haven't been buried in his death and brought out of the water in his resurrection, now is a time to do so. Now is a time to find your new life in which you can exercise for something not just physical, but spiritual in the word of God. That you can find rewards that aren't just physical, but spiritual. That you can find something about yourself that makes you happy, truly happy, deep within you. Something that you can't get from physical exercise. If that's something you want, I encourage you to reach out. If that's something you need, I really encourage you to reach out now. There are people here at Stewart, there are people all over the world that want to talk with you, that want to study with you, that want to be there for you right now. If there's anything we can do for you, I ask that you reach us right now. On bended knee I come With a humble heart I come Bowing down before your holy throne Lifting holy hands to you As I pledge my love worship you in spirit. I worship you in truth. Make my life a holy praise unto you. On bended knee I come, with a broken heart I come. Bowing down before your holy throne As I look upon your face Show your mercy and your grace Change my life, O oh Holy Spirit Make me fresh and ever my life a holy sacrifice to you. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Savior Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven away, but there's something I 
about that name. Help prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. I'd like to read a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, the author of the book. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces, and he said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me, often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Will you give thanks for the fruit of the vine and the bread with me? Dear Lord, our Father, we are so thankful for everything that you have given us. We are thankful that you know us, that you know we need this weekly reminder of your sacrifice. Lord, we're thankful that you know we are weak and that these emblems can help remind us that you love us, that you gave your son for us, that he gave his life so that we could have a new life with you. Lord, thank you for the bread which represents his body, his flesh that was pierced, nailed to the cross, God. Lord, we also ask that you be with us at this time, that we can examine ourselves, look into our hearts and see how we can better live for you. Lord, we're also thankful for the fruit of the vine, an emblem that represents the blood of your son, Jesus, the blood that was shed for us, that poured out from his body when he was nailed to the cross. God, we know we can't ever do anything to deserve that sacrifice, but we ask that you be with us now, that as we look into our hearts, we see our purpose and that our purpose is to serve you. God, help us remind us at this time that we are to be your servants here on earth representatives of your people to show people the covenant that you made with us. God, we love and respect you. We're so thankful for all that you have given us, especially at this time. And it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the heavenly land. 
Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust in his promises grand. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to the goal. Trust, Trust in him who leadeth who the way. Leads you. He is king will your soul. keep your soul. Let the world know where you be belong. faithful. Look to, to Jesus and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, blessed with earthly gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to goal. the goal. Trust, Trust in him who leadeth who the way. Leads you. He is will your soul. keep your soul. Let, Let the world all know where you be belong. faithful. Look to, to Jesus and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. When it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. There are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust him each day, we shall have pleasure untold. Sing and you'll and be happy to be happy. Press on to the, to the goal. Trust, trust in him who leadeth who the way. Leads you. He is king will your soul. Keep your soul. Let, Let the world know where you be belong. Be faithful. Look to, to Jesus and pray. Him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. What are you bowing? Dear God, thank you for waking us up on another beautiful day on your earth, and thank you for letting us have this means of, by technology to worship you and still learn, learn more about your word, even though we're not allowed to gather together as a church family today. And Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give us, and please let everyone that is sick and struggling during this time, during this virus, let them turn to you and realize that all the blessings come to you, and let us all see the good in this situation, Lord, and please let us devote all this free time we have to learn more about your word, and please be with all the 
medical workers and nurses and doctors that are battling this on the front line and thank you for their help lord and thank you for making them strong and able to do that for us and please let this worship service be pleasing in your sight and i pray that we will be able to gather together as a church family soon in jesus name amen